Well, hey there, welcome to day five of our Get Up and Go Challenge 5. Doing 30 plus days on dealing with challenges, dealing with change, guaranteeing that you're better off after you've experienced a change or challenge than before you experience that change or challenge. Using something we'll talk about in a few days called the SOAP framework. Probably thinking, what the heck, it's day five and we haven't even gotten into the framework yet. You haven't even told us how to deal with challenges and changes, what this framework is and what to do. Take it easy, take a deep breath, we're gonna get to it. All of the work that we're doing, probably through these first five days and for the next couple of days is the foundation. Whenever we wanna make a change, or we wanna learn something or we wanna add value to our lives, we need to make sure that we're building it on a solid foundation. And a lot of the things that we're talking about, you may have thought about in, in the past, but there's a lot of people that, me included, that don't think about them regularly or have never thought about them. And so we wanna make sure that we're, we're taking the time to build that selling foundation, to make sure that we're building our challenge and our change process moving forward on a solid foundation of things like what's important to us, what we really want, why we want it, our core values, things like that, before we go ahead and, and look at what we've done in the past and what we wanna do going forward, before we install and before we can install in our subconscious that new framework, that new system, we have to make sure that we have something solid, some solid ground to build it on. Have you ever seen a, a sandcastle? Let's say you're building a sandcastle on the beach. Anybody ever done that? I have. I've got a granddaughter, so I did it with my kids. I did it when I was a kid. I've done it with my granddaughter. And if you build it too close, close to the water or if you build it on a non-solid ground, it's easily destroyed, right? And it doesn't take you know, a big kid coming by and stomping on it for it to be destroyed, although that's a possibility as well. So we want to make sure that we're building that solid foundation as we go through each of these tools and each of these objectives. So yesterday we ranked our seven key areas of our life, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, relationships, and contribution in order. One being the most important to seven being the least important. And I got to say, I thought it was interesting. I don't know if you've looked at yours, but and maybe you've never done this before. But if we look at how we rank them, that makes it easy for us to make decisions and go forward in our life. It helps us to make sure that we're working on the things that are most important. Because if we work on the things that are most important to us, we get a, a bigger bang for our, our effort, our buck, than if we work on things that are just busy work and don't really get us the, the results and move us toward what we want. So today we're going to do something and our tool is rating something. And whenever we rate something, and we're just going to go on a simple scale, one to 10, we're going to rate each of these areas, how we feel about them, how we think about them, what we believe right now. So if we are a one, it means we're really, really struggling in that area and that we know it needs a ton of work and a ton of attention. If we rate it a 10, it means we're already, we've already achieved the ultimate of whatever we want in that particular area. If you are super duper physically fit in perfect health, in, in all of your eating, your nutrition, your weight, your energy, your physical activity, everything. If you're a professional athlete, probably a 10, right? Probably a nine or a 10 because that has been your number one priority. And maybe to keep doing what you're doing and what you've been doing, you need that to stay at a nine or a 10. So maybe that, as we look at the numbers, as we look at how we rate things, it tells us and gives us more information about ourselves. And that's what this challenge is all about. It's about getting to know and understanding yourself better because guess what? You are the only expert of you. Nobody else outside of you, nobody knows as much about you as you do and they never will. So how would we rate these? Uh, what I do is I just write them all down and I've already done that in my little December book. I haven't graded them yet, but I just write them down and then I give them a rating on a scale of one to 10. How do I feel about them? Now, if I look at this, I've done this before, right? I've, I've actually been doing this regularly this year. I've done it at least five times. And I'm going to hide my numbers because my numbers aren't those numbers anymore. They change just like everything else changes. Our life is always changing and we need to be uh, cognizant of that. And so we're looking for, you know, our general feeling. But today I just want you to take a snapshot and rate each of these on a scale of one to 10. How do you feel about them on a scale of one to 10? Physically, how do I feel about my my, all the aspects of my physical well-being right now, my physical being, my health, my energy, my weight, my nutrition, 
my outlook on my physical being. How, as a snapshot, just remember, remember those Polaroid pictures? You just take a snapshot, and in a couple of seconds, you had a picture. And whether you thought you looked good or bad in that picture, at that instant, that is what you looked like, right? Whenever I do videos, I look and I get still shots, and I'm like, oh my God, I really look like that during my video. Well, during that instant, that's what I looked like. That's what the snapshot was. So this is just today's snapshot. So I date it. So I know what the date was. And then I just, I go through it. How do I feel about these things right now? We have to remember that there's things called, this is really a subjective thing, right? Today I might rate myself sevens and eights and everything. Tomorrow I might be having a low ebb day or I might be feeling sick or something. And I might rate myself threes and fours and everything. It's subjective and it changes over time. So we want to take and have a periodic review every once in a while, which is why I've been doing it so much this year. This is at least the fifth time I've done this particular exercise this year because it's interesting and fun to see how those numbers change based on what's going on just in the various seasons in this year alone. But I, I always do this at least once a year, even prior to COVID-19. I did this once a year as part of my annual review. I do something called an annual review, which is a periodic review. And I look at each of the different areas and aspects of my life. And I say, how am I doing? How do, am I moving toward, you know, my ultimate goal is to, to, you know, magically, if I could be a 10 in all areas, that would be ideal, right? That's, that's probably not very realistic. And it's not even what I want. I don't ever want to be a 10 physically. I mean, would that be awesome? Yeah. But I don't want to ever be at the level of a, a professional athlete, the ultimate physical being. I guess when I die and transition, I'll be at a, a 10. But otherwise, no, I, I, I want to be healthy. I want to have energy. I want to have vitality. I want to eat right. I want to maintain my weight. I, I want to make sure I take care of health challenges that I've had in the past. But I am never going to put in the effort and the work required to be at a 9 or a 10 in my physical health, my physical well-being. Because guess what? Other aspects of myself are important too. And I want to make sure I have the energy. I want to maintain a certain level of health so I have the energy to attend to those other areas. But I also want to pay attention to and live my life in those other areas as well. So what we're going to do, 1 to 10, each of these, rate them. And then for our assignment today, I just want you to share one area. And maybe it's not your number one area personally. But what is the area you would like us to dig deep into first? What is the area that you want us to walk through the SOAP framework and actually do a specific example and work through the SOAP framework. I will do an example, whatever whatever category we choose, I will use my life and, and something I want to achieve in that area as a specific example to walk us through the framework, to walk us through. So you can see, number one, I'm doing it too, but number two, how you can take any area, any aspect of your life and apply this framework to it. So easy day today. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, relationships, contribution. How do you feel about each of these right now in your life? Physically, how do you feel? Five to me is average. I think I had a five here. I had a five in October. I haven't done December, but I was feeling pretty average. Now, I don't, I don't know how I feel today. I guess I still feel pretty average. I don't feel like I'm doing, I know I could be doing a lot more. So how do I rate myself today on that? How do I rate my mental health, my emotional health, my spiritual health, my financial health, my relationships, and my contribution. And I'm, again, subjective. Nobody's going to see this but you, but it gives you a benchmark. The things that we measure matter. The things that we pay attention to and that we take the, the five minutes or however long it takes to do this. I don't even think it takes five minutes. Uh, the minute or two to do this matters. It means that the different areas and aspects of our life are important enough to us to look at and to want to measure. And once we measure it, we can decide and use it to set our priorities, to know what we should work on next. One of the biggest challenges I think people have on the planet is, well, what do I do now? What do I do next? And this challenge, one of the outcomes that I, I hope that you achieve for it, because it's definitely done it for me, is I always know what to do next. I might try to tell myself I don't know, but I always know what the next thing is that I can do in any area and aspect of my life. Uh, and I want you to have that too. I think it's a gift to always know what to do. And, it, and will it be the perfect action every time? Of course not. But at least it gets you moving in a momentum. And once we're moving, that's when we can make things happen in our life. All right. Have an amazing day. I will be with you tomorrow. Any questions? Hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, share the one area that you want to work on first. All right. Have a great day.